Hi, this is Victor Chang with Bookmercial Productions here with another executive briefing. Today's topic is the marketing and pre-selling of a presidential candidate. So what I'd like to talk to you about today is the presidential election that's currently going on. Now, it's, I've been following very closely and I have to admit, it is entertaining to watch. Far more entertaining than any television show. This is reality TV at its best. Hundreds of millions of dollars in prints all said and done, probably billions of dollars spent on marketing to get one person a job. <laughs> uh, when you think of it that way, it seems somewhat ludicrous. But you see a lot of very interesting marketing lessons going on being tested in real markets. Now, at first you might wonder, how does the marketing of a presidential candidate really apply to your business? Well, let me tell you, marketing and selling is just that, marketing and selling. It's about getting people to make a decision. That can be a decision for politics, it can be a decision to purchase a particular service, or it can be a decision to buy or not buy from you or a particular competitor. So at the end of the day, marketing and sales is about getting people to act and act in a way that you would prefer them to act. Uh, and so if you're a presidential candidate, it's to vote for you. Uh, if you're the president or CEO of your own company, then obviously it's to buy, and, uh, buy your products and services. So there are a number of interesting lessons. First thing I want to talk about is uh, the role of books in the most recent presidential election. What you'll find is very interesting is that all the leading contenders up to this point have all published books. Now that's not an accident. Let me give you a couple examples. I have two books here in my hand. The first is the book by Barack Obama and it's titled The Audacity of Hope. You know, it's been on the New York Times bestseller list. Uh, and in fact, at the top of the title, it says the number one New York Times bestseller. On the Republican side is John McCain. Uh, his book is called Hard Call, presumably because he makes the tough call. And this book is also a New York Times bestseller. Now, not surprisingly, both of these candidates are uh, you know, leading, really, in their re respective primaries. And what's really interesting is there's a particular book I really want to focus on. I want to sort of compare and contrast these two books and how these candidates have used books in their marketing. And I always say that, you know, the reason that, there are a couple of reasons why you would have a book. And one of them, which we'll go into today in more detail, is you want to have the opportunity to pre-sell your ideas. Now, Barack Obama's book is actually quite good. You know, he really has taken essentially his position on a number of views, his vision for a better America, and he's published it in his book. And mind you, this came out before a lot of his uh, more ambitious political intentions were, were well known. And so it's important to recognize that, that his whole platform is essentially in here. This is really a brochure, if you would. It doesn't look like a brochure. Uh, you wouldn't typically pay for a brochure, but let's not mistake what it is. This is very much a sales and marketing tool to get this candidate elected to the President of the United States. Now let's look at this. There's a couple things that, that are worth pointing out. First is positioning, right? When you have a book, people sort of associate you with the title, right? So for Barack Obama's campaign, his big, whole, his big theme is really around uh, selling the idea of hope for a better America and the idea of change. So right now he's playing on pe some people's uh, perception that the America is sort of in trouble and that we need a change and there's hope for a better future. And not surprisingly, you know, his title of this book has the word hope in it. And the whole book, it's literally close to 340 pages of selling his position, his view of the world. Okay? Now, what's important to note is this, this book is not a brochure for his candidacy. He doesn't say, vote for me. What he does here is he sells his view of the problem. Right? The problem is there's no hope. That's why you need hope. Right? And what he's doing essentially is leading people towards ultimately voting for him. It's a very smart move. It's a very subtle marketing strategy, but it's also very effective. And this is what books are particularly good at. Now, if you want a brochure to sell a product that has these features for this price point, you don't put it in a book. Okay? You put that in a brochure. Now, if you're trying to like, get people to buy into your view of the world, your take on how problems ought to be solved, then a book is actually very useful for that. So books are very useful in situations where you have a very good product or service that's dominant in your market, but a lot of your prospective customers aren't really aware of the problems they have or don't believe they can be solved because they're, they're too used to it. So books are a very good tool for what I call selling the problem or raising the awareness of a particular problem. And so in, in our client work, we find a lot of our clients are, have services and products that are, that are very specifically targeted towards a very particular problem with, for a very particular audience. 
and for that particular audience, they're like the natural choice. So they get sort of the majority or lion's share of the business because they're very focused and specialized. They have a very niche strategy. And what they use the book for is not to sell the product or service, which they're already very good at. It's to get people to buy into their view of the problem. So books are a very good tool for, for doing that. Now let's sort of compare these two. You know, John McCain wants to be known for making the hard call, right? And Barack Obama wants to be known for really promoting and bringing a sense of hope to the country. Now what you'll find is uh, it, these, these candidates are selling two different problems. You know, Obama is selling, we need change, we need hope. And McCain is selling, we need someone who can make the hard call. Now let's look at what these candidates did not do, okay? Now, Barack Obama, you have to acknowledge, he has really gotten quite a bit of support, despite the fact that, I think factually speaking, he lacks a lot of experience relative to some of the other candidates. And so the title of his book is not my 45 years in politics, right? It's not the title of his book, because that's not what he's selling. He's selling a different agenda, a different take on the problem, a take that doesn't require as much experience to be successful. So he's essentially shaping the buying criteria, if you would, to use sort of more traditional marketing language. So I think that's a very important tool to recognize is when you have glaring weaknesses and you're trying to position yourself, your products or your services to really emphasize their strengths, you don't say my product is better, my service is better. You change the definition, change the criteria by which the prospective customer uses to make their own conclusion. And you try to influence the buying criteria in such a way that you're the natural and obvious choice. So if you are big on hope and you're big on change, you naturally gravitate towards Obama. If you're big on, say, experience, then you might gravitate towards Clinton or, or McCain. And so it's all about setting the agenda in advance before it comes time to make that final decision. And so that's why books are a very powerful tool. And it's just one way that books can be used to sort of be incorporated in an overall marketing strategy. It's fantastic for pre-selling a problem, for reorienting a prospective customer around a fresh or different perspective on the challenges they face to help them become more aware of the issues they face and the options that are available to them. And again, books are not really useful for selling overtly, more for earlier in the sales process where you're trying to establish an agenda, establish a point of view, and really want to demonstrate some thought leadership to your marketplace so people start paying attention to you. And so I think the fact that both of these candidates have gotten onto the New York Times bestseller list in advance of them really running their major campaigns, I think is, you know, it's not an accident. <laughs> and I think you'll continue to see this uh, progress, particularly, particularly in politics, because it's fairly effective. But the same thing is, is also applicable to um, a private enterprise. You know, it's all about convincing people to take your point of view on the problem, and naturally your point of view on the problem is is best solved by your products and services. But you sort of don't emphasize that really. You really focus just on the problem. So that's my executive brief for today. And I hope you'll consider taking a look at using books to promote and pre-sell some of the problems that your customers face and ultimately lead them to more business with you. Thanks and have a great day.